have six o'clock, I would like to call the uh, regular meeting of the CV Fiber Governing Board on November 9th, 2021 to order. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay. Would Hearing it, none. Wait would would a second. So um, we all, several of us got email from um, Will Anderson with regard to procuring fiber from through Vicuda. And my, my understanding was that uh, David wanted to proceed with that this evening and that Will was going to be joining us, although I don't see him at this point in time. So could we just put a place I, I the right, just for the record. Yeah, okay. So we just put a placeholder then there's Will. Placeholder in the idea that we might be discussing um, a uh, a buy a, a fiber buy recruiter. Sure. Let me let me add an item in my notes here. So fiber purchase. It is on my list. I will get to that shortly. Is there anything else that we should we should add or change? Okay. Um, is there any public Jeremy, comment? Oh, Jeremy, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Um, I would just like to uh, bring up a, a very quick topic, and it can totally be at the end if we don't get to it. So be it. But around open meetings and engaging in public discussions. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay, is there any public comments? Any commentary about things that are not currently on the agenda? Okay. Not seeing any hands. Moving along. Uh, consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda, which consists of the October 12th minutes as presented. Second. Second. Okay, I think Siobhan won that one. Yeah. Is there any any further discussion? Any edits to the minutes or anything? Hearing none, are there any objections to adopting the motion? Still hearing none, the motion is adopted unanimously. Thank you for that. Uh, financial report, including an update on accounting. Phil and or Ray? Okay, I'll, I'll give a, a, a quick snapshot of the numbers. Um, there, we had uh, $4,900 worth of bills um, um, that were approved since the last meeting, uh, $2,400 for project management, twenty-five, and, and another $2,500 for administrative services. Both of those cover um, a couple of months. Um, the current cash balance is three hundred seventy-two thousand uh, dollars. Three hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred is uh, restricted for um, grant pre-construction grants, and um, and uh, most of that's committed. Um, and we have about fifty thousand dollars worth of administrative uh, fund um, available. Uh, of the fifty thousand, we do have. Most of that is budgeted uh, to be spent um, and uh, for the months coming up. Uh, there have been uh, no new cash receipts, no new grants, um, and that's where the, the finances sit. All right. And, and as far as the uh, accountant, um, I guess I'll let Ray speak to that since he negotiated the So, so uh, before you go to that, hey, uh, John Russell, you are currently sharing your screen. Could you unshare your screen, please? How do you unshare it? I don't see that. I've never it's, used Teams before. It's, it, it's the box with the X right next to the microphone, right where you just clicked. How's that? Lovely. Thank you very much. Yep. Right. 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 So with the, uh, the question raised with regard to the account, the, uh, the contract with the account has been executed. Uh, Jeremy signed that. And uh, Beth Childress Associates is our accountant. And uh, they, uh, she starts on um, 15 November. We have a 
preliminary meeting set up for Thursday, I think it is. The meetings are all running together uh, with uh, Jerry and Phil and uh, kind of the startup mode and uh, there's money in the account to uh, cover that. And the pre-construction grant award that we received includes a $500,000 plus for administration, which also includes accounting, audit, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're financially recovered and contractually recovered. And soon <laughs> we will have our internal controls in place that the board, broadband board is so uh, insistent upon us getting, which is a good thing, I think, anyway. <laughs> Great, thanks for that, Ray. Any questions for Jeremy or Ray? Very good. Let's let's move on. Uh, clerk's report. Jeremy, anything to report from the clerk's side? Uh, let's see. Just am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay. Nope, you're good. Uh, no, I don't really have anything to share other than I've been keeping up with posting the minutes on the website, and uh, that's kind of the extent of my job at this point. And thank you very much for that. It's great to have. Um, it's great to have that all those minutes go up so quickly. Um, if folks have questions about it, they can immediately get it there and not even really have to request it, which is uh, great mm -hmm. in my book. Um, there was a request from, from Christian in the chat. Ray, if you could type in the name of the accountant, the, the firm in the chat. Thank you very much. You beat me to it, didn't even finish my sentence. Super, um, project manager's report, Jerry. Take it away. So we uh, we've got the uh, three three firms are out there collecting poll data. Um, actually, two of them are out there collecting poll data. One is cleaning up their data that they've already collected. Um, we have over seventy five percent of area A covered, um, and we expect to have all of area A done by the end of November. The intention, I believe, for the two firms that have folks out in the field uh, is to have them done so they can go home for Thanksgiving. Uh, so we sh we uh, we're moving forward with uh, covering all of Area A. We have the high-level design uh, vantage point contract that's out. We have, uh, of course, two two different grants that are funding that: the three CUD grant and the CV Fiber grant, and we were uh, going to have an update meeting on Thursday, which we typically do every other Thursday. It looks like they want to change it because Thursday, I suspect, is Veterans Day. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't know that people still take that off, but um, so we would have we would have gotten an update on Thursday. Um, we, we could maybe be a third complete on with their work, maybe thirty percent overall. We're sliding a little bit, we're, and we were going to find out tomorrow better, but I think we're maybe slid a week um, on our schedule, but that doesn't mean they can't, they wouldn't be able to make it up. We're still supposed to be finished by the end of the year. Um, and then the, the other uh, action that we have going on is Northfield Roxbury. Uh, the engineering and design is complete. The make ready is in progress. Uh, I did not get a response today from uh, from Chris Reckia, uh wondering whether or not they resolved their issue with TDS, the uh, the phone company. There was a little bit of a holdup in actually doing the make ready because of that, um, but I didn't hear back from him uh, yet on that. But the engineering and design is complete. Uh, they anticipate to do the construction very quickly and still believe that they're going to be finished by uh, the end of the year. As, as we need to be. And if I could ju just add to that, we've we've sent an invoice for the first part of their services back to the state and the state once they essentially once they cut us the check, then we will cut the check back then to to Valley Net to uh, to pay for the first or, or actually it's the entirety of it, right? It's the entirety of it. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't think we're going to pay them until they're done. Right. <laughs> Any questions for Jerry? My question is, is, is this 31 December uh, money or is this money that we have extended? And this is 31, this is 31 December money. Um, 
So we'll be so, paying them no, in we, December. No, we haven't had an extension on this yet beyond the end of this year. So we, we will be paying them in December. That's the expectation, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, pr pr provided that the work gets done, right? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> well, 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 we we won't be paying them if the work doesn't get done, is what I'm saying. Because we we that we all of that grant money that we would have been uh, sent will will be clawed back. Right, and they're well aware of that. Right, we've had this discussion with them multiple times. Yeah. Any other questions for Jerry? <clears throat> R R D, did you have something? I do a, a brief one. I'm not sure this is. Um, I should save this for the roundtable. But <clears throat> Jerry, is it is it possible without overburdening you to get information about our um, our progress on a town by town basis? Um, no, that's not a problem. I, ha I have that. I have that information. Which, which, town are you, which town are you in, Cabot. Hardy? I, I, I'm in Cabot, Jerry. And, okay, so and, no and, progress. And Cabot, right. So um, <laughs> people are asking me how they haven't, writing me, and they say they haven't seen um, trucks with our, our magnetic signs. Uh, is poll inventory actually going on in Cabot? It would be helpful, and I, I don't know if it's, oh, as I say, if it's overburdening you to get a, a, a report on a town by town basis about the progress of our build out. Yeah, well, r right now, the uh, there are five towns in Area A that yeah. have poll inventories that are that are going, and Cabot is in Area B, and we're not exactly sure when uh, we're going to begin poll inventories in Area B. Um, we don't have the grant funds yet, even though there's a, an agreement about to be signed. So we would expect that that would occur in the spring, uh, late, maybe, maybe, maybe in the in the it, towards the end of the winter when folks can get back to work. It depends on how hard the winter is. Um, so that that's that ha that hasn't changed. Um, yeah, that is that is a change. I'm sorry. That is a change. Okay. Yeah, we, we were originally shooting for doing having all of the poll inventories for the whole district by the end of the year and the yeah. high level design by the end of the year. That was the 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 original plan. And that's so. And uh, to be clear, I think I don't think Cabot is in area B. They're in area no. C. Right. We are in area we are, B. We're doing area B and C at the same concurrently. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. So that that is a change, and um, uh, I would be I don't know about the other towns in the area C, but I would be grateful to to have a a town by town update that I can share with um, with people in Cabot. You got That's it, it. R.D. Thank you, Jerry. The the next big update that we'll have is when the uh, when the first tranche of the next grant comes in and we can right. esen essentially send you know send the folks back out into the field when they're available when that's possible again and and they're very well maybe may you know polls that they can that they can do even with even in crummy weather um but there's going to be some you know short of busting out the snowmobiles um are just not going to be accessible until the snow clears and mud season has passed got it so blocking on the blocking on the grant money right now uh, anything else for Jerry? Okay, I'm not seeing anything else. Um, let's see, annual report budget hearing. We are obliged every year to invite our member towns, the uh, lawmakers the and the executives of our member towns to weigh in on the budget and the annual report. And this is our statutory obligation to conduct this hearing uh, now by what November or by the end of the year I think I think at this point um, so if there are any um, any town officials that would like to weigh in or provide feedback here uh, at this hearing uh, this would be the time to do so 
Um, or for that matter, if we have delegates that want to provide feedback from their towns, um, this would be also the time to speak up. Do we have anybody looking to comment on our proposed budget and our proposed annual report? Yeah, just to broaden that, and that is that um, by the by the 15th, and so we're before the 15th, uh, we're supposed to hold this public hearing according to the statute. And uh, in addition to hearing from the legislative bodies of district members, all other interested parties uh, that have an interest in the proposed budget, and it required us to give notice to the towns 15, at least 15 days in advance. Our annual report itself um, was the invitation. We actually put in there the notice of this of this budget hearing, and so if anybody has something to say, uh, they should say it now. Um, in addition to this, on December on December fourteenth, um, uh, we have our our um, uh, board the next board meeting, and at that board meeting we are to adopt the budget. We approved a budget before. On the 14th, we're to adopt the budget. The budget that was approved will change between uh, when we approved it and then because more information has become available to us, et cetera, et cetera. And so on the 14th of December, you see something slightly different. The Finance Committee will be reviewing that uh, in November and make a recommendation for the board in December. Thanks for that, Ray. So we're not adopting the budget tonight. We're just getting some feedback. So, if, so if folks do get feedback from the towns, and if it is after this meeting, we can still um, take it into consideration. But this is the the formality of putting it out there and making sure that there's a time dedicated to uh, town officials or other interested folks to to weigh in. So, I will do another brief request for comments. Otherwise, we will have a mighty short hearing. Okay, uh, so I will declare the hearing on the end, the uh, budget annual report closed and uh, we will move on to the pre-construction grant update. Um, we have an agreement. I have an agreement uh, in my inbox right now. Uh, it required an iteration with some modifications and changes. Um, and uh, it looks pretty clean now. I sent a copy uh, I don't remember who I sent a copy to, David and Ray and Jerry, I think, um, of the, the newest version with the correct the corrections, or maybe I didn't get it to every, everybody. Did I get it to you, David? I might have missed you on that. I'm sorry. Um, I, it's my intention as soon as I get home, <clears throat> once I've uh, put the kids to bed, I will, um, I will sign that, send it out. Christine signs it, probably still tonight. Everybody works late nowadays. And so that will be executed. It will hit finance tomorrow. Um, and then we start whatever sort of sausage making process is involved in that bureaucratic digestive system. Um, and we'll, we, I reset up the ACH so we should have direct deposit. We shouldn't have to work, you know, wait for Montpelier to cut a check, which then goes down to White River Junction, which then comes back up to the Montpelier post office, which then comes down to Berlin to me. Um, <laughs> so. I'm hopeful that we that by filling in that paperwork, the ACH stuff, that means it will land in our bank account. And it's a not insubstantial um, uh, advance. I think it's a quarter of it. It's like seven, 700K roughly. Um, and we can, we can really hit the ground sprinting. So uh, anything else that uh, anybody else wants to mention about the, the pre-construction grant? The, the only thing I would add about that is that um, uh, with the money in the bank, we can give the notice to proceed for areas B and C. So, um, RD, what you were concerned about is when that was starting, it, it'll be starting um, probably by the end of this month, and it will slip into the Q1 of uh, 2022, but that is, um, uh, but it is what it is. And uh, it also provides the money for a bunch of other things that uh, we can do. So, seven hundred and forty thousand or something like that. Nice chunk of change. Right. Um, and just for uh, for the record, for our minutes, uh, 
whoever is calling in from the 813 area code, which I think is what, South Carolina, if you could just identify yourself so we can put you in the minutes. Uh, uh, Tampa, it's Christopher Shank. Oh, Tampa, okay. Thanks, Chris. Okay, um, anything else in the pre-construction? Any questions or other, other thoughts? Uh, it's been hitting a lot of, you know, the, new, the press conference hit a lot of news, uh, news stories. There was an extended interview that Stu Ledbetter did with uh, Christine Hallquist that included the New England cable news coverage of me, you know, like positioned me so that the sun was directly in my eyes and I'm sort of <laughs> doing, do, doing my best not to squint and not to tear up, but so you, you can see that. Um, and, and me in the rare occasion of being in a suit, so enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wack you update. look fine. <laughs> Thanks, RD. I appreciate it. Uh, WEC update. Anything else different or new that we should mention about uh, WEC? Sure. This is David Healy, and it's um, we the 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 three CUDs received an updated our draft first draft memorandum of agreement from. WEC, I think, two weeks ago, and we're in the process of reviewing it and trying to make it fit more with what we're looking for, but it's progressing, but ever slowly. Uh, the other news is that um, Velco and WEC ran the fiber line from East Montpelier substation to Maple Corner substation, which will be, um, it's 144 strands, which WEC is going to have 72, and they'll lease to us 60. So that's um, in the ground and on the poles. And uh, the town of Callis approved $30,000 last night to extend that line to from Kent Corner to the town office. Callis town office is the only town office with DSL in the district. So this is a big, big deal for this town. The town's been waiting for years. So. That's sort of my work update. Um, Jerry, do you want to say anything about the progress with uh, meeting with them on Tuesdays? Uh, sure. Thursdays. We have we have regular Thursday meetings um, with WEC. A uh, lot of socialization going on there, understanding each other and and our needs, and and making sure that we're going to be all on the same page, trying to prepare for make ready, and working working together to see what the best way to move forward with the the big make ready load that's going to hit WEC uh in the not in the not too distant future so it's uh it's a it's a it's a regular meeting sometimes they're quite brief um but i believe they're quite valuable in in getting uh the teams comfortable with each other go ahead ray i think the only thing i'd add to this is that um when we're talking about the WEC uh, relationship. What we're talking about is the WEC network, so-called WEC network, which extends from CV fiber, EC fiber into NEK, uh, CV. And of that almost 850, 900 miles, we have 500 miles of that. And the idea behind that is that um, WEC will get funding from uh, RUS, USDA, at a, at a low interest rate that would help finance the construction of uh, those 850-900 miles. A, an impediment to this that has surfaced is that um, uh, WEC, PUC, PSD is looking for uh, some assurance that uh, the CUD is going to be able to make the payments on their operating lease for this fiber and that we're and that there's a process uh, being engaged in right now with regard to identifying how that might be how that might be accomplished and it includes members of the dcbd as well and um, uh, we're not there yet uh, there are other parts of the dark fiber agreement that, that they were talking about that we have to work our way through but right now it appears the major impediment might be the, the funding the, the backstopping of our uh, payments so to be continued there was a uh, a question from henry in the uh in the chat what's, <clears throat> what's the intersection of wec cuds so that's the kingdom and us in ec fiber 
and the NRTC CUDs. And do you mean the those that have chosen to work with NRTC? I mean, I think only yeah. only the, the kingdom. Okay, okay. Um, all right, Any anything else regarding WEC? I had just okay. a quick question on that. What's uh, NRTC? What's that about? I don't understand that. This is David Lawrence from Middlesex. Hey, David. So uh, NRTC is the, um, I'd have to look it up, the National Rural Telecommunications Co-op. They're a large cooperative of all sorts of different organizations that is dedicated to building uh, telecommunications infrastructure in rural America. They are, um, they were the ones that, that we worked with to be involved in the um, Ardoff auction. They're also uh, kind of the lead, the lead player in the uh, operator developer process that the Northeast Kingdom Community Broadband went through. So they will be the ones spearheading the, the construction project and all the rest of the stuff for NEK Broadband. They're also, um, they either have their hands on or have easy, easier access to fiber, um, which actually this is a nice segue into the next, uh, next agenda item. Um, they have <clears throat> access to fiber and they're willing to sell it to, to us and have with a shorter lead time than we would normally see from other vendors. So. That's great. So. Yeah. Go where ahead. are they? Uh, everywhere. Where is this fiber that they might have that they would have access to, or that we might have access to through NRTC? So if you could hold that until the next agenda <laughs> okay. item, we actually have a, a a presentation specifically about that coming up. Good. Thank you. Coming up imminently. So on that note, thank you, RD. You sort of <clears throat> paved the way for the next bit. So uh, procurement of fiber. So. We have this sort of inside track on uh, this fiber and through a, an agreement with the Vermont Communications Union District Association through the broadband board, the state of Vermont and some sort of interconnected players, um, essentially having the community broadband board pre-purchasing um, in, in a way and us pre-purchasing in a way, um, a thousand miles for, across the entire state of Vermont for uh for next year and so um will do you want to uh do you yeah, want to take yeah. it from here and introduce yeah, thank, thanks jeremy that was a that was a good introduction but maybe i'll just like kind of go through our thought process here and uh introduce uh, where we're at now with this uh, arrangement uh for those of you that don't know uh, my name is will anderson um i am in cb5 or territory here in montpelier but i represent the communications union district association uh so trying to work with all nine CUDs across the state to, you know, facilitate uh, uh, our our mission. Uh, what I've been working on right here is that, uh, so actually we're, we're securing 2,000 miles of fiber for the entire state through NRTC. Uh, for reference, NRTC, yes, it is a nationwide cooperative. It's headquartered in Washington, D.C. or just outside Washington, D.C., uh, and they have connections to a number of the key fiber manufacturers, most of which are located in the state of Georgia, actually. But uh, anyway, uh, our plan is to secure 2,000 miles of fiber, uh, 1,000 of which is being secured separately by Northeast Kingdom. So yours and the other eight CUDs uh, uh, have the ability uh, to commit to a certain amount of this other 1,000 miles uh, that's in play here. Uh, how are we paying for it? Um, the Vermont Community Foundation um, and other uh, partners who I won't uh, get into just for confidentiality reasons uh, are backing us with a letter of credit to make this purchase. Um, you know, in theory, we would have just tried to make this purchase straight through the state of Vermont because that's where the money is for broadband. But due to their procurement policies, it would take far too long. Um, the lead times that we're looking at here are, are going to increase soon. The prices are going to increase, especially because of the new broadband funding that's coming down to every state as part of the infrastructure bill. So we're trying to move quickly on this. And for that reason, we've sought funding from different partners across the state. 
Uh, so that all is looking very good. The letter of credit is ready, and we are we are moving in towards making this purchase from NRTC for 1,000 miles of fiber. What do we need from your CUD is uh, a commitment to take on uh, a part of this purchase, uh, because in order to obtain the letter of credit, we need to be able to show that your CUD and the others uh, will be willing to take this fiber and to use a portion of your grant funds to pay for it uh, when it does arrive. Uh, and that that pledge serves as the security uh, for us to be able to make this purchase. Um, so I've circulated. Uh, I, I, maybe I should take some questions now, if there are any. I see, I see yeah. Philip. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Is this uh, this is existing fiber that's th that's there now? It's this is fiber that. This is fiber that's yet to be manufactured. Um, we actually have an opportunity here to get ahead of the line in terms of the next uh, the next cycle of manufacturing for uh, these suppliers. Um, okay, so it's, so it's not back, we're not buying a backbone. We're just buying materials. Yes, this would be this would be a pre-purchase of materials. Uh, we would be ordering them to manufacture according to our specifications and deliver them uh, right here to Central Vermont. <clears throat> and that's actually closely related to my question, which is um, when we say it's the materials, we're th speaking specifically only of the fiber and uh, necessary connectors, but not things like um, blades and racks of uh, switching servers and so on, right? Uh, th that's correct. Right now, we're dealing exclusively with uh, fiber cable. Uh, we're looking at three strand counts, 48, 72, and 144 strand counts. Mm -hmm. um, we are hoping that this, uh, you know, partnership can be replicated for further purchases to to fill in gaps with hardware. Uh, but for now, we're exclusively dealing with fiber cable as that is the hottest commodity uh, that we think, you know, we have a window to to seize on here. So, so there was a – oh, go ahead, Phil. Okay, yeah, this is following up. So are we ahead of the curve? Do, do we need our high level design in place first so we know what kind of fiber we I see some heads shaking left or right. So we don't we don't need that in first so we don't know what we don't need that to know what kind of fiber we need. The strand counts. So we're gonna go for it, David. Yeah, so we're gonna get a mix of we're gonna order a mix of fiber based on some rule of thumbs for backbone. Secondary backbone and then um, regular going down the road fiber. So it'll be, you know, a mix of the 144, which is about 20 to 25 percent, and then um, at least in our first build, and then the rest will be a mix of the 72 and 48. So yeah, we that's stuck holding that's inventory. Right. Yeah, so so it's and it's also it was based on a feasibility study that was done by uh, by WEC actually looking at WEC's territory. That was the breakdown that worked out that their sort of um, pre-high level engineering did when they were looking at building out their entire territory. So that was what we were using. Um, so, but th the reality is the amount that we're looking at getting, which I think, well, we've got what, three CUDs roughly competing for the remaining thousand miles not of the, in the kingdom, is that right? Uh, it, roughly speaking, yeah. We're, we're pretty certain that assuming your CUD does proceed, there'll be two others. Uh, but um, every CUD is eligible to uh, pursue part of the allocation. Uh, so uh, in theory, yeah, three CUDs are, are certainly going to go for it. So, and, so and what's so, our dollar commitment? So hold, hold that thought. So um, I, I just want to say that we are – we will use this. This will all get used w one way or the other. So, the, the, yeah, the, the dollar commitment is, is – is forthcoming. Let me add you to the end of the list because we had some other folks um, queued up first. Henry, I, I did I did that question get answered? How much can we get? It's going to be a thousand miles split, probably three ways. Um, so it would be thirty-three. Oh, go ahead. No, please, Henry. I... Yeah, no, I'm just wondering. Uh, would it be thirty-three percent then? Maybe. Um. So so um. I, I've sent some of the documents uh, along to some of your CUD leaders, Jeremy, David, Ray. Um, you, you are you're eligible to request uh, as much fiber uh, as you want. Um, it, we we haven't established a firm policy for this. We're, we're going off the idea that uh, 
we're just barely going to have commitments uh, to enough of it based on the numbers we've got from the CUDs. Uh, you can request as much fiber from the 1,000 miles as you'd like. Um, when we see what other CUDs request, we may have to, you know, figure out uh, who's going to get what. Uh, but if you were to request a third, that would be fully, fully reasonable for in terms of what we're dealing with here. All right. So oh. Jeremy, Jeremy, then Phil, then Ray. Okay. My question was already basically answered uh, it was kind of is it compatible with whatever developer operator we end up getting and it sounds like the answer is yes my next question though is i forget approximately how many miles do we have like what percentage of our network would this be david 1200 we have 1200 miles and, okay so we yeah we're through, yeah we're good so, <laughs> yeah so so this this is roughly the amount that we're looking at building next year the one the amount that was in the forecast for area A was about 300 miles. Uh, so Phil, then Ray. So, so my question was, you know, what's what's the uh, what's our commitment, dollar commitment? How does uh, that compare to rack rack rates if if it was a total? So uh, we do have the pricing from the final pricing uh, for NRTC, uh, which I've included in those documents. Um, it's, uh, let's see, it's a couple thousand dollars uh, a mile for each uh, for each of the fiber counts. Um, uh, and as it compares to the rack rates, we think that these are the best prices based on the other suppliers that we've talked to that we're going to get for a long, long time. So Ray or David, do you want to answer Phil's question concretely? Um, yes, and, and more generally, and, and that I can is, give you the real dollar. Yeah, we, and and there are dollar figures, but what I would suggest to, to the board is that we let the executive committee work out the details, and obviously they have to stick within the budget. Um, and so the, the mileage, how many is 144, 48, blah blah blah. I don't think we have to worry about that. I think the important decision for the board is we want to engage in this uh, uh, group buy uh, with these good rates, ensuring that we get something um, uh, in the queue uh, so we, we might get it earlier than later. There are a lot of things to be worked out, like the insurance, where we're going to store it, blah, 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 blah. We push all those decisions to the executive committee, um, uh, but let's get the board to the point where uh, should we do this? My my view of the world is yes. I have confidence in the law firm that drafted all of these uh, documents that we should approve. And so that's where I'm at. Um, uh, and if David has more. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, it, the crude estimate of 300 miles is about $900,000. And just to let you know, it comes out of our construction grant money that we would be getting from the board. So it's sort of an advance, it's getting advances on it's like getting advance on a construction grant. So whatever we buy for fiber is that amount of money from whatever dedicated amount of grant money we're gonna get for construction. So does that does that answer your question, Phil, to your satisfaction? Uh, it does, and probably the, big, the bigger thing is um, we're assured of a, of a supply so that we aren't held up uh, waiting waiting for the, the, the uh, a critical piece of deliverable. Um, yeah, and this is really this is really kind of a like a I don't say golden goose. Maybe that's overstating it, but in terms of you know everybody feeling frustrated and panicky about you know are we going to be able to get fiber when we we're being told like well there's an you know an 18 month lead time yeah we 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 don't have that and so we we have the opportunity here to get a pretty good price a bulk purchase with some of our some of our friends and other CUDs and to have that that checkbox checked and that's we're not blocking on that then when it comes to you know next you know quarter two next year quarter three next year that's done we, we have to worry about the other equipment and labor and you know uh, make ready but the having the having the actual fiber it's it's out of our hair uh, Jeremy and David you still have your hand up by the way <clears throat> so yeah, I, th I think that this is a great idea. We should absolutely do it. And I'd like to make a motion that the governing board authorize the executive committee to uh, work with Vicuda to figure out how many miles we want to order and 
all those sorts of details. Second. Okay, moved by Jeremy, seconded by Siobhan. Is there any further discussion or does anybody have any questions? Is anybody, um, is there anything else that we can clarify before we put this on the executive committee? <clears throat> Okay, not all at once. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm going to take that as kind of general satisfaction. And if if this is something that you would like to like more details on, you're obviously very very welcome to uh, join us in the executive committee to um, to look in, into the more details of this. So, um, are there any objections to the motion as presented? Okay, I will take that as unanimous approval. Thank you very much for that. Is there anything else that we wanna talk about with the procurement of fiber? Uh, will, our next uh, executive committee meeting is on Thursday. Or Alan, Alan has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see it. Go ahead, Alan. Um, I just had a question for Will. Are Please. there going to be opportunities to work with NRTC to help us find contractors for building? Uh, once we are ready to build, or is this simply a service that is looking at only goods and uh, tangible items? So uh, for this purchase, Alan, uh, it, it's strictly limited to the uh, manufacturer purchase and delivery of the fiber cable. However, I, I do know that NRTC is, is looking for any opportunity they can to, to work uh, with CUDs in the state of Vermont. Wow. Uh, I, you'd have to talk to them about that, but I do know that they are, are very interested in exploring such opportunities uh, with CUDs like yours. <clears throat> that would be great because two of the things I've been hearing from people who are skeptical that we're going to be able to succeed is, A, are you going to be able to get fiber, and B, are you going to be able to get contractors? So, I mean, I, one of the things that's kind of slipping from the table, and which is good, is that are you going to be able to get money and with the grant starting to come in finally from state and federal sources people are are less skeptical on that but on the products and also the labor uh those are the two areas i've gotten some questions on so th thanks for your response i appreciate that <coughs> thanks for that alan so and and as phil noted in the chat we still do need to follow our own purchasing policy this is also mm. something that is going to be required by the broadband board and by, um, you know, when the eventually the construction grants come out and we sign that, it's all we're all going to have to follow that um, that as well, which is likely to be probably more restrictive than our purchasing policy. Um, um, yeah, yeah, just just to speak to that quickly. Um, in the documents that our lawyers have prepared uh, via which your CUD can pledge a portion of your grant funds for fiber, there are provisions in there as well that say, you know, to follow all all uh, all relevant public uh, procurement policy guidelines. Um, so uh, the idea is that <coughs> the, the, the speed and price at which we'll be providing the fiber will supersede uh, any other options uh, for, for cable when you do when you do carry out the procurement policy. Sure. Uh, R.D., then Jeremy. Um, is this fiber, is this actually going to be delivered to us? And if it is, where are we going to put it? Um, well, to some extent, uh, R.D., that is a question you, you uh, will have to answer yourself. Uh, however, uh, we My do garage? have some contingencies. Uh, well, I, we do have some contingencies in place here. Um, Vicuda, the association, when we purchase it, will be insuring it uh, from shipping until uh, your CUD takes ownership. Uh, we are also working with the state uh, to uh, reserve two storage facilities, um, one of which is in Rutland, uh, and the other is, I think, in Berlin. It's it's more in, in our neck of the woods. Uh, so we are making contingencies to insure and store the fiber until it passes into your hands. But you're also very welcome to you know, make your own arrangements for storage insurance as well, because that will probably be critical once the fiber, uh, to, once you decide to, once you're able to start building. Thank you. Thanks, R.D. Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, another thought, R.D., is that, you know, we're going to, at some point, hopefully soon, have a developer operator on board, and they very well may have the capacity to, to store this for us, and they're going to be the ones 
ultimately stringing it for us. So it might make sense to lean on them a little bit. Um, but my question for uh, for Will is, um, when do you need to know by? When do we need to have this uh, contract executed? Well, uh, I, I so short answer as soon as possible. Um, we've been working, okay. we've been putting this through for putting the working on this deal for like a number of weeks now, trying to sort all the different moving parts out, uh, and we're very close. Um, so definitely, you know, the sooner that your CUD is able to commit an amount of your uh, construction grants for the fiber, the better. Uh, however, uh, you know, definitely, you know, you don't have to sign tonight and 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 give an amount tonight. Um, but I would say if you're able to uh, produce that, you mentioned executive committee on Thursday that I'm that I'm very uh, able to attend. Uh, that would be a that would be a really great time for us to uh, have a you know 300 miles, let's say, of this fiber committed. Um, we're, I'm expecting to have a, a commitment from another CUD uh, tomorrow evening. Um, and once we're over the 50% mark, which is the letter of credit, uh, we'll be in we'll be in good shape uh, to proceed with the with the uh, with the funding partner. Um, so I would just say, you know, if you so if if you are able to, assuming that that was an authorization uh, for your executive committee to carry out uh, this arrangement with the association, Thursday would be an excellent timeline. That was the intent of my motion. Okay. Great. Uh, and, any other questions for Will or um, anything else that if you want, like I said, if you want to join the executive committee, we can get a bit more into the weeds. Otherwise, if you, um, you know, if you have thoughts about it now, I'm happy to happy to hear them. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say that these are expenses that are, that are planned and budgeted for. These are going to be things that are in the construction grant. I mean, I'm just I'm kind of saying the same thing someone else did in just a slightly different way, you know. So when we go and ask for the next, you know, ARPA funds for the construction portion, this is something that we were already going to be asking for. But in order for us to beat to beat the deadline and beat the, the lead, where we have to do this sort of out of order. So. Uh, Exactly. There's, yeah. There's there's a lot of motivation for us to to get this going, and sort of and, and not not exactly we're not even really prepaying for it. It's sort of like a grant anticipation note, as I understand it, right, Ray? Right. So um, this isn't surprising, and this is kind of this is vetted fairly far up and down the chain, you know, all the way up through the state. So this is there's not any um, not any surprises there. Um, and Henry's question: Do we have construction funds to buy more? And the answer is. Probably, but maybe not in immediate, not for next year. We would probably do the construction for next year and probably get the next purchase in the pipeline, you know, pending funding for the B and C construction the following year, and then probably do that either in one or two more big bites of, of a similar size, I think. Yeah, I understand. Oh, oh. If I may just quickly add to that, um, once detailed design is completed for uh, more CUDs, we're planning on initiating this process again to fill in the gaps for purchasing. Uh, so this is an initial purchase. We're trying to get the, the item that's in, in the highest demand, and, and we're going to replicate this process once detailed design is complete for more CUDs. Great. Any other questions for Will? All right, great. Well, well Will, you... You are free to free to depart if you like. Otherwise, feel free to hang out. We're uh, we're, we're we're pretty cool, and this meeting shouldn't take too long. But I understand well, you might have. I uh, I'm a uh, I'm a resident of Montpelier, so I'll, I'll stick around uh, with with uh, personal interest. All right, sounds wonderful. Thank you. Let's um. All right, I have it written down here. So uh, open meetings, uh, public discussions. Uh, Chuck, did you want to say something about this quick? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to have a quick call out. Uh, that those of you on the Oops, sorry, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Uh, for those of you who are on the governing board uh, mailing list, which is most of you, um, you probably received uh, an email from one of our constituents um, this evening uh, asking about a potential open meeting law violation. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is uh, I would just like to ask and remind everyone to, you know, not engage in those kinds of things directly. Um, we have a way that we need to respond to those sorts of requests from a, uh, a legislated perspective, and, and, you know, we will follow that process accordingly. Um, 
Plus, uh, I, I know that in this particular case, it, it might be, uh, uh, there might be some emotional charge to respond directly. And uh, just as board members, we do need to hold ourselves to uh, a high road and ensure that we are putting the face of our CUD first. So just a, a kind ask to, you know, please make sure, you know, we, we just follow the process for responding to such things. Um, and this is a direct side effect of, uh, of course, the decision that we made a, a few board meetings ago to open up our governing board mailing list uh, to anybody to allow them to email that list. Um, so, you know, we will probably run into this again in the future. So thank you. And I, sh I should also point out that that at any any time you feel like clicking the reply all, please don't, which that could right there constitute a violation of uh, open meetings also. So if you if you want to reply to me or forward it to me or one individual person, that's that's okay. But doing a reply all is generally generally not good netiquette. We don't use that word anymore, but um, it's also just not <laughs> probably not super legal in, in our case as a public entity. So. Wait, we don't use that word anymore? Damn it, I've got to cross <laughs> that off my list. I, 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 <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I used that word in a, in a lecture or saw it in a sort of like, I don't know, trade or industry magazine. That, well, you're certainly way more with, in touch with the kids than I am. That went out the door with Netscape Navigator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to, to that end, I would like just to point out that uh, here BCC is your friend. So when you're sending messages to those bigger mailing lists, um, uh, it, it can often be a good idea to just make the two address to yourself and use the BCC liberally for all of those mailing lists. And, and that avoids all reply all capabilities. So you, you can sort of, uh, you know, um, nip that one in the bud. Good advice, Chuck. Thanks for that. Uh, anything else on open meetings, uh, public records, et cetera? Wonderful. Let it, let's go on to, where am I? Let's go on to uh, neighboring CUDs, Elmore and Waterbury. Just wanted to give you an update on this. Waterbury voted to join um, Lamoille CUD. So we will be sort of sharing, um, sharing Waterbury with them. It's not super clear what the division um, what the division of Waterbury will be like, because there are parts of it that, parts of Waterbury that make more sense to come from Stowe. Um, and based on, you know, some funding that they're talking about, they, they may want to do Waterbury in their design instead or also or something. So just wanted to put that out on everybody's radar. And there have been conversations too about something happening similarly with Elmore. Because Elmore is kind of is compared to CV Fiber, it's sort of a you can't get there from here without long, long stretches of absolutely nothing, um, which would never make sense to run fiber up Route 12, for example. But coming in from the north or the west or elsewhere uh, would make a lot more sense. So it's quite likely slash possible that Elmore may also join Lamoille. Um, so right. So I just want I just wanted to put that out there that this is something that's um, that we're looking at tag teaming in some ways these uh, border towns in kind of a similar way as we're looking at Washington. So any uh, thoughts or questions about that? Okay, moving um, along. I'm just curious, yeah, Jeremy. sorry. How does that affect our high level design? Is that going to throw a monkey wrench in things? No, um, we will still do okay. our high level design. It's still going to be part of it. Um, they may also have a slightly overlapping high level design. We will almost certainly share notes. Um, the way that the poll inventories are being budgeted for um, are essentially by unserved addresses. So if we are being allocated the unserved addresses in Waterbury or Elmore, we will contract to do that work. If the construction actually happens by one of the other CUDs, we will hand the data over to them, which because again, we're all working towards the same goals. Um, it's there's not really going to be any sort of conflict there. Okay, thanks. Anything else? 
And the next one, Ever North Grant Amendment. So um, I made the mistake of when we talked about this in the executive committee meeting of calling this Everbridge. Everbridge is an utterly different company that I happen to have gotten some spam email from. And I realized <laughs> that's why I called it that at my Norwich, uh, my Norwich account. So I had Everbridge and I was doing my, the agenda. This is Ever, Ever North. Ever North is an organization, a nonprofit that was the kind of fusion of two different housing nonprofits. And they're building um, or renovating or whatnot a uh, apartment complex in Barrie. And they're looking to build, this is something that I'm pretty sure we've talked about at the whole governing board before, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they are hoping to um, essentially serve everyone in the entire complex. I think there's three big buildings with, with Wi-Fi. The CARES Act funds, which the state of Vermont did not spend all of the CARES Act funds because we couldn't but we couldn't essentially build enough. Um, we couldn't build enough in internet connectivity quick enough by the end of this year. Um, still has a lot of money in it. So Rob Fish put us in touch and suggested that um, that we consider funding this project as as it is within the footprint of CV Fiber. It does get people service. Um, it does not burden us with any additional paperwork or overhead. Um, passed the the grant amendment, and um, I did push back on Evernorth and ask them to do something that looked more like a competitive bidding process. They did that. They found you know competing bids to do the same work, and they found that the, the who they started with actually had um, had the better price. So they are looking to they were looking to amend our CARES Act grant uh, imminently to allow them to do this work and have it covered by the, the CARES Act funds that the state of Vermont already has. And this is work that can be done. It's not going to take too terribly long. Um, and it will be done by the end of the year. They will be served and turned on and active by the end of the year. Jeremy. So would you be doing the grant amendment with the executive committee who would be taking that on? So I so we we've already talked about it at the executive committee. I think that we had a uh, it was unanimous to support this, but we felt that we didn't have the charter, we didn't have the, the the approval as a body to make that big of a change. That's why we're coming back to the governing board. I would I would actually ask because Rob essentially has all of this language already ready to go in the grant amendment. So I would I would like if you could authorize me. Just to execute, to I mean, to to review with you know, with anybody that I choose to, um, or with anybody that wants to work on this, um, to review that grant amendment and execute that, and then get that project going so that those you know, you know, I think a couple hundred people can get their service. So motion to motion. Uh, approve. Oh, uh, motion. Chapter. Okay. Yeah, well, go, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, so the motion in the chat room says move the board approve amending our cars cares grant to affect construction of the ever north project. Second. Okay, moved by Ray, seconded by Siobhan. Um any further discussion? Yeah, Jeremy. I would like to propose a friendly amendment that uh Jeremy Hansen be authorized to do whatever it takes to make that happen. I don't know exactly how to phrase it, but you know, to basically to hand it off to Jeremy to work with Rob to um, to go through the grant amendment process and execute it. Second. Okay. Uh, it's a friendly amendment, so it's up to it's, Ray. No, oh, sorry. Yes. It's, it's acceptable <laughs> to me. Jeremy, I'll, yeah. I'll, let, I'll uh, let you, uh, Jeremy, man, I'll let you do the wording <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'll, I'll accept, it, I'll accept it in concept. Okay. Any other any other thoughts about this? Okay. Any any objections to this? Okay. Motion passes as friendly amended uh, unanimously. Thanks, everybody. Let's go on to uh, procurement policy. Ray, do you want to take this one? 
Yeah, so I, I guess I'll start with the um, the big picture. And the big picture is that the Vermont Community Broadband Board requires a staff a procurement policy. <laughs> Accordingly, um, taking a look at what NEK Community Broadband had done, um, went through the process of customizing it for uh, CB fiber. Um, NEK Broadband had based their model off of what the Vermont League of Cities and Towns had put together, which was um, uh, based upon what the federal and state requirements are. And so I sent out an email to everyone with uh, kind of the background for um, the, the procurement policy as well as sending out the procurement policy. And I'd be happy to entertain any questions that anybody might have. I would say this is the um, uh, recommended by the policy committee and the executive committee. Any questions yeah. for Rick? So just, just to restate, this is something that's been borrowed, legally vetted, vetted again by Ray, um, looked at by policy, looked at by executive committee, um, required by our grants. Um, so, I mean, if, if there's, if there's objections, not, you know, not that I would want to overrule them, but if there are objections, they, they ought to be rather specific so that we can fix the, the, the body of the, of the policy. Otherwise, I, I think we, we have to do something. And this is, and this is pretty good what we have here. Jeremy. Second. Okay. I was going to, you, I was going to move that we adopt the policy as presented. Okay, I'll take, <coughs> I'll, I'll take that as a backwards motion. RD moves that. <laughs> that, that. That works for me. Any any further discussion, questions, or otherwise? I was gonna I was gonna ask if if we're allowed to make motions in the chat. Uh, it, because not everybody is necessarily watching the chat, it would be better to to vocalize those. Right. So the motion in the, uh, is that move that the governing board approve and adopt the procurement policy dated October 25th, 2021. I think that's what RD motioned. I, my it memory did. served me. And then Jeremy yeah. seconded that. So we should be, we should be good. Any further discussion or questions about this? Okay, great. Any objections to adopting the policy from October 25th? Great. That passes unanimously. Thanks for everybody. This is going so smoothly. Um, uh, website updates. There, um, we were talking about potentially putting some material differently or um, reorganizing something. I, I'm. This isn't familiar to me. So, um, so I raised this issue before, and and the. We don't have a page in which we have our bylaws and policies that we've adopted, such as the procurement policy, for example, um, and other documents. And so it would be my intent um, to make this motion, move the board approve establishing a public documents page on the cvfiber.net website for the publication of non-confidential materials, such as policies, reports, budgets, and studies, and, and such other documents as the executive committee may authorize. Second. Second. I would note, I would note that this, uh, NEK does this already, and, and I haven't gone around the horn to find out whether DB Fiber and others do. Um, but frankly, um, it would certainly help me find documents later. <laughs> and, 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 and I recognize that there's a, a body of work that we have to kind of catch up on. We have a whole bunch of policies and Alan has gone through laboriously and identified all those policies and, and uh, we need to get those, we should get those online. And we have gone through a process by which we have redacted um, documents such as um, our feasibility studies and others, as well as contracts um, where we have been required by the state to identify and mark confidential materials, as well as having a legal opinion with regard to those legal opinion, those uh, those confidential materials. So I, I feel like um, we have processes in place by which we can um, uh, put these information online and keep it up to date once the, the first 30 to 60 days goes by and we get the 
the, uh, the three years or four years of uh, data um, collected and, and loaded up there. Okay, Siobhan, then Jeremy. So I, I agree that this is a great idea. I think that we do need to be more um, uh, proactive and making our documents and policies and everything visible. Where I come in with this is, Who's going to do this? Who's going to be responsible for this? Who's going to design it? Because this isn't something that just, if we're not careful, it's going to accrete and be as unsearchable now as it ever has been. And and so it needs to be carefully managed. That's that's my only observation. Yeah, certainly, I think the I think design work uh, will will turn to Chuck, and he has his hand up for a reason. But uh, once yeah, so, we get so kind of the original design then. going, go ahead. Sorry, what was that, Jeremy? You're up, then Chuck. Oh, okay. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, for some things like, you know, budgets, whatever, that are just straight up public, that's not an issue. Um, but would we then have to go back or go sort of proactively redact things like our high level design? Would we put that on there? Um, and if so, would that sort of ahead of time redaction cause open meeting issues if we haven't I, I i'm not sure how that would play out yeah I, right. I think that uh this gets uh, punted to the executive committee chuck chuck then i want to i want to add something and then we'll come back to you ray Chuck, you're on mute. You did. Thank you. A couple of questions to unpack here. The first question would be around sort of the design and initial development of such a place. Um, as it stood last time I chatted with our web developer, uh, she was more than willing to continue doing work based on the retainer we paid her at the end of last year. Uh, I don't know whether that still stands true as of right now because she has done some recent work for us. So I will re-engage with her to find out um, you know, if, if uh, that is something that uh, she'd be willing to take on. Knowing that we do have two other outstanding projects I've asked her to engage on prior to this one even coming up. So note that there, there is a bit of a backlog of work here um, that, that we are actively managing. Um, and so we may need to make some prioritization decisions if she decides that, uh, you know, she's burned through the, the amount of money we gave her. Um, the other facet here, uh, and by the way, I, uh, sorry, just to back up, by the way, I would point out that I don't see that as a big barrier. And certainly, should we need to give her some more money, that's not that big a deal. She, her rates are very, very competitive, and and that, I think that would be a good use of money to build out something like that. But I think Siobhan's point about who is going to keep such a thing up to date is much, much more critical to this. Uh, these kinds of things get out of date very, very quickly, and we need to have a well-established process by which this is going to get updated. Um, and so a question I would have, and I don't know who the best person to answer this is, maybe Ray, maybe someone else, uh, but is this something we could engage RPC to take on ownership of? And what sort of expense would we be looking at in doing that? Thanks, Chuck. So, so my my comments were were simpler. Were simple too. The, the the keeping it up to date, I think, is going to be the hard part. I think if we can put something like policies, reports, budgets, those sorts of things that are already public documents that change with a fair amount of warning, and um, policies are not going to change super often. Reports, we're not going to probably get lots and lots of those. Budgets, we get once a year. I think we can put those up there, and those because they don't change are probably not going to be that that big of a deal. Um, I would say extending it much beyond that is uh, is going to be a pain. So uh, Ray, you're up next, and then Linda, and then Jeremy. Yeah. yeah so um, it, this is basically kind of a ministerial function in terms of things like, um, as we've talked about, agendas and minutes and kind of the routine, you know, byproducts of our of our processes and everything. And I've I've spoken with Chuck, and I've spoken with RPC, and RPC is of a mind and a willingness to participate with doing this work. And I know that Chuck has been trying to uh, set up a, um, a meeting with them in order to kind of go through what the what the thing might be. Uh, frankly, this is a WordPress uh, website, 
once you set up the page, it's not rocket science with regard to maintaining documents and stuff. And I see Chuck nodding his head, and I want you to notice that. Uh, so it's, it's a matter then of um, somebody approves, something gets processed, it goes off to somebody at RPC, and they enter a few things in, and it's done. And we get charged for it, but you know this is kind of part of those critical infrastructure things that we need to do, like maintaining our minutes and our and our agendas and all those kinds of things, and being more being as transparent as as we can and ought to be as a municipality. So that's my comment. Thanks, Ray. Uh, Linda, then Jeremy, then Chris Schenk. Hi, I'm a website developer. I would like to volunteer some talent to uh, work on this project. Can I be put into the loop? Sure. If, if, if the motion eventually does get uh, get approved, then I'm sure we will be tapping your uh, your capabilities, Linda. Thank you for putting that I out am there. I am not, I am not, I'm volunteering. I am not charging. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I like, I like that even better. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, then Christopher Schenk. Yeah. So, I just wanted to say that in terms of, you know, putting policies, um, reports, budgets, you know, the stuff that doesn't happen very often, that doesn't seem like that big a lift to me. And I'm already posting the minutes and stuff to the website. It really wouldn't be that big a deal. One, you know, obviously once the framework is set for me to do that posting, um, I'm also happy to have, you know, the RPC do it instead, if that makes more sense. But um, I think that could also be, at least while I'm clerk, a clerk task. Thanks, Jeremy. Christopher? Yeah, apparently, Linda and I are the you know, Waterbury Web Developers Association. I used to be a web developer. Also. <laughs> um, I, I unfortunately can't volunteer my time to, to, uh, uh, to build it, but I'm happy to, to help um, you know, wherever can, I can. But I, I would say that it, if we go forward with this, and, and I do think we should, um, I, I think we it doesn't have to be this crazy complex beast where, you know, we have multiple layers of categories of documents and all of this kind of stuff. I mean, we can simply properly label documents and upload them with a timestamp and, you know, and make it searchable and that's it. And, you know, so you can, you keep the full history there. Documents don't take a tremendous amount of space. You can just, you know, every month up to upload, you know, a, a handful of documents and, and people can search through them. Uh, assuming that those documents should legally be, you know, shared publicly like that, but otherwise keep it, keep it simple. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Christopher. Any other, <clears throat> any other thoughts on this? So we have a motion um, to create a public documents page as uh, you may be able to see in the chat. So we, where we can put some of this material and we, you know, ended up with some volunteers and some folks that may be able to manage this even without, um, our paid web developers time. Chuck? Yeah, uh, usually this is Alan's moment, but I'm gonna steal his thunder a little bit. Uh, I, I do just wanna remind everyone that by definition, most of the documentation, all of the documentation we create is public by nature. And it's only when we have produced a document that there is a portion that we are, we have and a, a statutory allowance that we can vote as a body to redact, can we make something private? But even there, you can't make the entire document private generally. You can only make whatever portion of it is uh, statutory allowed to be made private. Um, but everything is public by default, generally speaking. So maybe we just call this page then policies, reports, and budgets instead, rather than public documents, so as not to have a misnomer. But uh, I see Jeremy, then Alan. I was going to say kind of the same thing that, you know, we, we definitely don't want to brand this as all of our public documents, because then we'd have to be uploading every single email that we send. Um, there's that. Go ahead, Alan. Chuck, that was great. Uh, the only thing that we want to be clear on is the way that redactions are made are is when somebody requests a record from the holder of records for the organization. And I believe for us that's the clerk. 
and it is the clerk's responsibility to either go through or work with somebody to go through the document if there is a desire to try to redact some information based on specific exemptions in the law, in the public records law. So this is not something that the whole board would have a discussion about whether we should reveal this information or not. It's really one person, the holder of the records, maybe consulting with other people whose information is important, who makes the decision about what the redactions are. I don't think we want to give this to the board. It, 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 a, it, there's really no mechanism in the law to say that says you should do that. But I think generally a board of 21 trying to decide what should be redacted is not a good discussion. Here, here, uh, Ray. Yeah, I only add that um, one is that the executive committee is going to be the gatekeeper with regard to everything that's listed there is is, is examples that such as it's not kind of specific. Um, secondly, that uh, much of the things that we're producing now with regard to our project winds up going to uh, the Vermont Community Broadband Board, uh, which requires that those documents, um, uh, if there are confident, if there is confidential material in them, that they be um, properly identified and that there's a legal opinion attached to it. And so it's the executive committee that's going to is going to sift through as things occur, um, what's public, what's not public, what should be on there, what shouldn't be on there, and um, I, that's the point of this is to have let them let them decide. A, a twenty-one member board is not is not the place to do that. All right. Any other um, any other thoughts about this? The motion remains. All right, are there any objections to this motion? Is, would anybody like to vote against this? Seeing none. I have a question. Do we do we need to modify the motion specifically because the motion mentions public, the public documents page? Would you take as a friendly amendment, Ray, if we called the page something different? The policies, reports, and budgets? <laughs> the, only, the only reason it's listed that way is that's the way that NEK has it public documents page and I don't care one way or another what whatever we call it we'd like to make it clear as to what um, what it's going to be perhaps we can also punt that to the executive committee to decide or, or the communications committee I mean you could add at the discretion of to it sure how about um how about if we change it so we just struck the public documents bit, establishing a page on cvfiber.net for the publication, so on and so on. There we That's go. You. Okay, everybody amenable um, to that? Accepted. Okay, so move that the board approve establishing a page on the cvfiber.net website for the publication of non-confidential material, such as policies, reports, budgets, and studies, and other such documents as the executive committee may authorize. Everybody, so just restating that before we, for everybody, does not object. I don't see any objections, so that passes unanimously. Thanks for that. Appreciate the thumbs up there, Christopher. And we will move on. The next item that we have is the developer operator selection, which I think is probably a misnomer because I don't think we're actually, we're still not quite ready to select an operator, developer, whatnot. But I do believe we want to go into executive session for this for contracts. Is that is that right? Do you yeah. have that that contracts language? I don't have that that on this PC. Super handy. Uh, I can find it, but um, I so, think I can find it. On, I, uh, I no, I have it right here. I have it right here. I'll, I'll put it in the chat room. We had to use it the other day for PDC, so I think this is it. Why don't you read that, Ray? Yeah. Would you verbalize that, please? Certainly. Move that pursuant to 1 VSA Section 313A1A, we find that premature public knowledge or discussions relating to operator contract negotiation, contractor negotiation, both the CV5 at a competitive disadvantage. Second. Okay. 
Moved by Ray, seconded by Jeremy. And I should clarify that this is a discussion of contracts. The specific exemption that's in statute is this is contract. Any further discussion about this motion? Remember, this is going to be a two parter, so we will move to find this and then we will then go into executive session or not. So any any objections then to this motion that we find that. This Did you get a second? second? Yep, it's it's seconded. We're about to we're about to vote by silence. Got it. OK, any objections to that? Motion passes unanimously. So I now move that we enter executive session to discuss the contracts, the potential contracts with the uh, potential operators. Second. Second. OK, so that was moved by me, seconded by RD. And we, um, so we should also friendly amend that to include our project manager. So it would be all, uh, do we also want to include um, alternates in this discussion as well? Yes. I think that that would make sense. So alternates, delegates, and our project manager. Any further discussion? Any objections to this motion? All right, so we are now in executive session. I would ask, um, so no new chat comments. Please until we are um, executive. And Kristen, um, I'll take the rest of the minutes for this meeting and I will send it, send that to you after the meeting's over. All right. So um I ha I am so why don't why don't you take it? I'm going to I'm going to mute, close my screen. There's there's someone here I I'd like to chat with for a little bit. Please feel free to um, to have the the conversation, David and Ray, and anybody who was you know familiar with the the discussion. Please feel free to to take over from here. Um, we're gonna have to ask um, Christian and Orca and folks to leave. Maybe I should kick those folks or before uh, before I go. I imagine Christian, you could probably do that on your own. Yep. Is uh, Will still here? So John Walters, I'm going to going to say goodbye. Thanks, John. Orca, thank you for recording this.